I bought this broken Animal Crossing Special Edition Nintendo Switch, and I told my wife if she can fix it, she can have it. So I actually have two broken Animal Crossing Switches. This one has a shorted board. This one has a very scratched screen and back case. So the goal here is for Jessica to take the motherboard out of this one and put it into this one. So on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that you can actually repair this Nintendo Switch? On a scale of one to 10, I think I'm maybe a six, or a seven, I am going to get to use iFixit repair guide, so that also makes me feel like maybe I can pull it off. So let's say a seven. Let's find out. So we have agreed that Jessica can use the iFixit repair guide in order to do this repair. We've also agreed that she can ask up to five questions and not asking any more than that. Then she also gets this $200 for the Nintendo eShop. If she asks six or more questions, then I get the money. This video is sponsored by iFixit. More on them in a minute. So according to this guide, I'm supposed to keep track of where all the screws go. I'm not going to waste one of my questions asking him how to keep track of these screws. I'm just going to figure it out. You're not going to tell me if I do anything wrong, huh? You're just I'm going to hope laugh. you do something wrong. You're just going to sit there and laugh. Lift the rear panel up from the bottom of the device and remove it. It looks so easy when you do it. <laughs> you sound like my comment section. <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong. I mean, some of them are. You got your first piece off. First piece. And you didn't even break anything. I didn't break it. All right, next. <laughs> what is that tool? Do I have that tool? I'm not asking that question. I guess you see that thing just comes in. Careful. Oh, you got it. Use your fingers or a pair of tweezers to peel back the piece of foam on the top edge of the device near the fan exhaust port. Top, fan, but you you tell me if I was going to ruin something, right? You could ask me one of your questions, you know, I, I am know. right here. If the foam doesn't easily peel away, don't force it as it might end up tearing. Carefully peel at different spots to pull back the foam. That's cheating. <laughs> I just, this one doesn't even have foam on it. What am I doing? Okay. Oh, okay. What's it stuck on? Oh! <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that should not have been that hard. I don't know why that was so hard. Disconnect the battery. Really the point? Is, I feel like you use this end. There we oh, go. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Now remove the heat sink. So I feel like you don't usually show these parts in your videos anymore. They're usually too boring. Also, like, my nails never look as good as yours, so that's part of the reason it's so boring. I feel like I need to save my questions for a lot for when I put this thing back together, because <laughs> I feel like that's what, that's going to be the much harder part. Is this even, do I even need to be that careful with this? Because aren't we just using the other one? Is that one of your questions? No. Come on. Oh. Yeah! Oh. oh, why was that so hard? Okay. Oh, okay. I've seen you repair ribbon cables. I do not want to... You could just ask me one of your questions. You have five of them after all. It's only one. Okay, fine. Is this your first question? This is my first question. Yes! Question number one. Okay. <laughs> So in order to get this ribbon cable out, this is a great place to use your question because this one's kind of difficult. I usually don't pull on this under here because these are metal and this, as you notice, is a very stiff ribbon cable. It's really stiff. So sometimes I go like this and just kind of pull back, oh. but also you have to be careful of that. But um, now that that's out, I'll use this to just pull it a little bit more and then it's out. There we go. Okay. Okay. At least that was a good place to use it. <laughs> Four more questions. <laughs> that was really, that was really making me nervous. Okay. Okay. That one. Oh, that's a longer one. Okay. Got oh it. my goodness. You're cruising now. It's the adrenaline. Oh, 
You just need to jiggle it back and forth. That's how I've seen Steve do it. You just jiggle it back and forth. Maybe right. he just said that to trick you. It says you can even use your fingers for this. How big are their fingers? <laughs> Who could use... Say in the comments if you can use your fingers <laughs> to pull that teeny tiny little connector out of there. They're using... There's hard... There is hard grips on them. These are all smooth. I blame the tools. Do we have I any? I mean, we have some things with grips over here. These are a little bit, these are a little bit big, but still much smaller than my fingers. We're gonna try these. Oh <gasps> God. Don't use smooth tools unless you're Steve and then you could probably use whatever. I use pliers when I do that. Okay, insert the spudger into a gap between the motherboard and the frame. Carefully lift up the motherboard and remove it from the frame. Why do they make it sound so easy when it... Okay, so second question. Question number two. Like, can I even get this up or do I have to remove the fan? Uh, I would say there may be a way you could do it, but since there's only three screws holding the fan in, I'll just take the fan out. I feel like that's a problem with the uh, with their repair guide. <laughs> I mean, there's different models of this, so like oh, it, that yeah. could be like maybe the first model. So yeah, that's one of the things that, that's difficult with repair guides sometimes is like it's not like they're gonna have you know a separate repair guide for every single model always. So right. So we'll take the fan out because because Steve says that that's the easier way. Wait, is that what you would have done? Yeah. Fan, fan screws. And now, will it just lift up nice and easily? Maybe. I got it. <laughs> and this and, is the good one. And now you have to do all that same stuff again, but in reverse. <laughs> now what's your confidence level? Oh, I mean, I did get it apart. I did have to use two questions and the repair guide overall is pretty solid. I, I think I could do it. I think I'm actually at, like more at an eight. Oh, all right. And I can ask more questions if I need to. I mean. It's true. Okay, now this needs to go into the other switch. Let's see if she can do it. Now you've seen Jessica using the iFixit repair guide throughout this video. iFixit has tons of repair guides for most electronic devices, but they also sell lots of parts for most electronic devices. In fact, for the Switch, they sell things like batteries, the SD card reader, and they even come with all the tools you need to do that job. So if you're looking for Nintendo Switch repair parts or repair parts for most any other electronic device, their website is a great place to find them. Go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix. The link is right in the description and it'll take you right there. And now we're ready to put the motherboard into this one. Oh, I think I can, I think I can. Okay, just everything backwards. This one. Okay. Must be. All right. Uh, connector. Actually easier to get in. Did we get it? That's not a question. So one more, right? One more ribbon cable. The most difficult ribbon cable. No pressure though, no pressure. That's right. It's fine. If you put that in wrong, we have to replace that entire connector, but it's fine. I'm sure you could do that. <sighs> no pressure. Is that true? Are you just saying that? If you put that in and bend one of those little um, pins inside this connector, then yeah, you have to replace the connector. All right. Question I will three. use my th I will yes. use my third question on this stupid I'm ribbon Getting cable. closer and closer to $200. Please somebody comment that you also find this one very difficult. It's not just me. Do you want me to tell you how I do it and see if you can do it? Sure. So usually what I do, a lot of times I'll like use my finger to kind of like bend it. So like it's bent like right here. So I try and bend it a little bit more like that. So it's bent down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of like push it right in there where it needs to go a little bit easier. Is 
That looks pretty close. Once you get it kind of lined up, then you need to push down a little bit more, and that that should get it to go to go in there. Like, no, like, there you go. Oh, there we go. And push down. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, it's looking pretty close. Oh, we got to get that other side in though. So yeah, okay, that's going. You did it. Okay. Damn that breath again. Okay. Okay, and you have two more questions. I'm sure everything will be easy from here on out, right? Press down. How? <laughs> I feel like I can get it, but then I don't know if that's dumb. Okay, fine, fine. I can't, I can't. <laughs> okay, so this is question number four. So you have one more after this. So what I usually do is kind of like what you're doing, look kind of like you were, and then you got to make sure everything's flat. And then, there we go. You can feel it kind of click into place. And there we go. This is a very difficult connector, ribbon cable connector to get in. I would so. agree with that. <laughs> All right, I'm one question closer. I already know what I'm going to spend these on, at least some of them. The new Zelda game. Yep, that's what these are going for. Ah, uh, the perfect amount of thermal paste. <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> I feel like it's not all the way down. Did I miss a step? Is something under it? I don't see anything that's obviously wrong. Question number five, are you gonna ask? I feel like this is probably an important thing to get right. So, yes, fine. No. What in the world am I doing wrong here? Question number five. So this is all of her questions is if she has to ask any more then these are all mine. So this actually acts kind of like a clamp. So this is totally normal. As you screw these down, then that kind of keeps that clamp down and keeps pressure on that thermal paste and against the chip. So it's totally normal. Oh, that kind of makes me mad. <laughs> all right, fine. So you're all done, but is it gonna charge when we plug it in and will it turn on? The battery's probably dead on this, but let's flip it over and see if it'll turn on. We probably need to charge it first. We might as well try it and see. And definitely dead battery. So let's get it charged up. Once it's charged, then we'll try it again. So we left it charge overnight. It theoretically is all charged up, but let's get this screen cleaned before we see if it turns on. And now with it all back together, the screen all clean, if this works, then Jessica gets to keep it. Let's try and turn it on and see what it does. You ready? No, but yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, there we go, it does turn on. Okay, does the screen work? Yes, it does, the sound works. Okay, so it works, and I only asked you five questions, oh. which means that means that I can't get my game in May. I guess you'll have to figure something else out. <sighs> there you go. I have $200. Wait, what are you gonna buy with it? You don't even know. Maybe I'll buy the new Zelda game. <laughs> if you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I bought seven broken Nintendo Switches to see if I could fix them. I'll put that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix them. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it. And we hope you have a good one. Was my thumb too high? Yeah, he can cut it out if needed, I guess. My thumb?